Batman, what do you think of our fine city? It's very bright. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso. And I've spoken before about many shows that I felt were sadly taken before their time. And today's video is no exception. Although it is a little bit different. Because this time, I'm talking about an animated Superman series that isn't really a series. Actually, the whole duration of this show only amounts to a little bit under five minutes. Really? With only three episodes in its lineup. I mean, for real? Essentially, this was a short-lived series of Superman shorts that would air on Cartoon Network before and after commercial breaks. And I'm only bringing this up because it seems to be otherwise forgotten. Each one or two minute long episode would focus on a different character in the Superman lore, who was also a citizen of Metropolis. From Lois Lane, to Jimmy Olsen, to, bizarrely enough, Bizarro. These stories were short, sweet, and to the point, favoring the cuter and quirkier aspects of the characters and the city that they inhabit. When watching these shorts, it almost feels like a much more condensed version of a Justice League action episode. I like the animation. I think they fit the tone and the feel of this miniseries. And surprisingly enough, there's some star power in this lineup, with Kevin Conroy coming back yet again to voice Batman. And with other notable Batman voice actor, Dietrich Bader, which I am Dietrich butchering his name, serving the role of the narrator. Not to mention they had Principal Schneider from Buffy the Vampire Slayer playing Brainiac. Which sounds like perfect casting, but honestly, you, you, you'd be hard-pressed to pin that voice down. The episodes are simple, but effective enough in showcasing the characters whilst providing an easy-viewing, fun experience for the viewer. The first episode puts a spotlight on Lois Lane, and highlights just how good of a reporter she is, showing her as being absolutely relentless in her pursuit of the next story. And unfortunately for Gotham's greatest protector, her latest story is he. Throughout this episode, she hounds him for an interview. And being that he's less of a people person and more of a bat person, he's not really in a talkative mood. But then again, when is he ever? Batman desperately tries to get out of the interview, but to no avail. He may be able to escape the Riddler's nefarious ways, but it seems like there's no escape from Lois Lane. She follows him around from Metropolis to Gotham City, shadowing him in his each and every endeavor. Eventually, the Bat finally gives in to Superman's squeeze, and gives her an answer to every one of the questions she's hounded him about for the last 24 hours. All at once, all in order. Ah! Oh, it'll just be a few questions. Fine, you want answers, here they are. Where did you get the funding for this plane? Sound investments. The jet fuel and the Batmobile. I built it. Why Batman? Do you think bats are scary? They are scary. How many Robins have there been? A bunch. Who's the scariest villain you've ever fought? The Ten-Eyed Man. <gasps> Who's the most pathetic? Killer Moth. There! Great! And I think this is my personal favorite episode of the three, because it's so perfectly in tune with both of these characters. The second episode follows Jimmy Olsen, hard at work at the Daily Planet, complaining to Clark Kent about how needy his best friend Superman is. That is until later that same day when Jimmy is, of course, inevitably taken hostage by some random giant monster and needs Superman saving. As is tradition. Not only was this a constant trope in old-school Superman comics, but even when Jimmy had his own spin-off comic series, it kind of just consisted of whatever monster the writers could come up with kidnapping Jimmy and having Superman come to his aid. You know, a lot of people call Lois Lane a damsel in distress, but they couldn't be any more wrong because clearly Jimmy Olsen is Superman's damsel in distress. The same way Robin for many a years was Batman's damsel in distress. Superman of course shows up and in his super petty ways only saves his alleged best friend when Jimmy apologizes to him and agrees to hang out with him afterward. The final episode of this episodic trilogy follows Bizarro, entering the Daily Planet in his own secret identity, not Bizarro. Which is really... It's really A1. That's just, that's some great shit right there. Bizarro? Uh, me not Bizarro. Me mild-mannered reporter named Not Bizarro. We all know it's you. Hey, Not Bizarro. When suddenly Brainiac attacks. Bizarro, looking to save the day, tries to do so by doing the exact opposite of Superman. Once again, as is tradition. At first, instead of trying to throw the Brainiac ship into the sun, he tries to throw the sun at Brainiac's ship. And when that obviously doesn't work, he just kicks it because... 
Superman would have punched it, which surprisingly actually works. And that's really it. There's not a lot of content here, but I feel like the content that was provided was really good. I think it was animated competently, I think it was fun to watch, and I think that these interpretations of the characters, while being fun and funny, are still true to the actual characters. I love these mini-episodes because they're clearly made by people who understood these DC characters. You would have to in order to properly spoof them like this. Very often do I find parodies nowadays to be very lackluster. Like, the thought process now has gotten so simplistic that it's just... Throw this guy in a Batman mask and have him say or do some goofy shit. Yeah, that's fucking funny. Cause Batman wouldn't do it, that's funny. That's fucking funny. I can't tell you how many times in life my friends have sent me bat metal, thinking that it was going to, like, revolutionize my life. But I'm gonna be real with you. I clearly love Batman. A lot of you might not know this, but I also love Death Clock. I do not give a fuck about bat metal. I do, however, appreciate satire like this, because it exists as something that is true to the source, but instead is just played for laughs. That's the kind of comedy I like. It has something to say about the original source. And look, I'm not gonna say I don't like the scary movies, but truthfully speaking, I would much more appreciate something like Scream, which is in its own unique way a satire of horror movies. If I had one complaint about this show, one complaint, then it's only this. The worst part of these shorts is that they were too short. And I mean that all around. The episodes were too short, the series was too short-lived, and now because of that, my video is too short. I think there was a lot of potential in the show, and I really would have liked to see it expanded on. I enjoyed this smaller project, and I'm surprised that it didn't get picked up to be anything more. Now that might sound outrageous to you, but I want you to keep in mind that the Geico Cavemen went from commercials to getting their own TV show, and it sucked. We'll get back to that later. So I don't really see why this couldn't go from an ad before a commercial break to being the show that was followed by commercial breaks. Anyway, I have to give this my highest recommendation. This is not something that's going to consume a whole lot of your time, so go out there and track it down. If you have four minutes to spare, then that's all you need. Tales from Metropolis, really fun, highly underrated. Wish I could say more about it, but there's not much to speak on. So with that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the night. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs>